What would you do to become a best-selling author? In fact, what lengths would you go to to become a New York Times best-selling author or even a Sunday Times best-selling author? Well, indie author Mark Dawson found a way to do that and it's landed him in some rather hot water lately. And um, we're gonna discuss that in today's video, so stay tuned. Hey, this is Dale here. And uh, full disclosure, before we do jump into today's video, I just want to let you know in advance, this is not a beat down Mark Dawson video. In fact, I happen to be a pretty big fan of Mark Dawson and Self-Publishing Formula Podcast, otherwise known as the Self-Publishing Show with James Blatch as well. Um, but what this video is going to do is it's going to bring up the question about this. Is buying your way onto a best sellers list ethical? Before we do jump into that question, let's discuss exactly who is Mark Dawson. He is a prolific indie thriller novelist, and he actually has been at this for quite a few years now, and he's essentially like the self-publishing go-to expert. Now, some of you might be looking over at me saying, well, aren't you the go-to guy? I actually go to Mark for a lot of information, and he actually used to be traditionally published, but he segued over into self-publishing and has just crushed it year over year in this business. And he even fully discloses his income earnings every year and inside his private Facebook group he had shared that in 2019 he had grossed over two million dollars in sales. That is pretty freaking stellar. All right, so what is the Sunday Times bestseller list? Now, some of you over in the UK exactly will know what it is, but for those of you that are in the US or elsewhere, the Sunday Times bestseller list is essentially like the New York Times bestseller list. It's very prestigious. When you can hit that list, that means you've really made the grade. You've sold thousands of copies just to get there. But some people have discovered this loophole, and this has actually been years in the making. I mean, years upon years. Before this whole modern day era of self-publishing, some traditional publishing companies have actually done this to bolster the rank of an author and get more exposure, therefore getting more sales. In fact, one 2004 study found that making the New York Times bestseller list saw debut author sales increase by 57% while the average for all authors was about 13% Boost. So on July 10th, the self-publishing show podcast hosted by James Blatch and Mark Dawson, episode 234, they talked about Mark's release of his recent book, The Cleaner, and uh, it was released somewhere about July 1st. And he came out the gates really, really great. Uh, he sold about roughly 1,300 copies and was able to make number 13 on the Sunday Times bestseller list. And this is despite having limited distribution of his hardcover copies throughout the UK. With the pandemic going on, uh, getting distribution just about in any brick and mortar store or even in his instance, grocery stores, was near impossible. So he got to thinking, okay, I made number 13 with this. What if I could just sell maybe another 300 copies or even 400 copies to get myself into the top 10? Well, that seems like a reasonable question. The problem is, does he just really wanna buy the books and just sit on them? Well, he reached out to his readership and polled them to find out if they would like to have a hardcover copy. And I believe he even threw in an autographed copy on top of that and he would be personally shipping it out himself. So he had 400 interested readers. So he's ready to go ahead. He went over to a local children's bookstore and ordered 400 copies. And something he shared with his co-host James was that it was going to cost him about 18 pounds more to ship each one of the copies out. Now, something I kind of glossed over was, how much did it cost for the 400 copies? For the 400 copies alone for him to buy that, that was gonna be 3,600 pounds. That is a significant amount of money. So with the addition of shipping and handling, how much it cost him inside store, you know, Dawson's gonna be out money. You know, he's essentially giving back to his readership. And you know, if I was my favorite author offering to send an autographed copy of a book that I couldn't otherwise get in one of my local stores, heck yeah, I'm gonna take him up on it. I'm not gonna try to go ahead and look for a bookstore over in the UK because I don't know who's gonna be good. I don't know who's gonna be bad. I just know that my favorite author is going to send me an autographed copy, I'm in. So July 17th, the self-publishing show podcast shared the results. And in it, he said that, you know, it, it worked. They made number eight. 
So that was within that week that they were able to sell the 400 copies. So he went and bought it and then he had to distribute all of these copies out to the different areas, including the US, Australia, and other parts of Europe that couldn't otherwise get the hardcover copies. And his co-host asked him, did he see any noticeable bump in sales? And he pretty much was like, mm, no, not really. In fact, this quote he actually said was, it just goes to show you in terms of what sells books and not necessarily being on a bestseller chart, it's usually the promotional tools deployed to the best effect. But here becomes a little bit of the issue is he did go on to flex on social media. He went to brag on there and say, oh, look at I made number eight on the Sunday Times bestseller list. And even though he'd shared on his podcast, he bought these books himself to send off to readers. That kind of really ticked off a few authors out there and they actually labeled it as disingenuous in sharing his success of hitting the bestseller list even though he bought the copies himself. But the part they always leave out is the fact that he bought it for his readers. So enter the Guardian, the bastion of all reputable news sources. I know this is coming from the guy that called CNN a reputable news source. I meant to say established, but that's neither here nor there. But at any rate, July 20th and July 22nd, The Guardian put out a less than nice piece about Mark Doss, and they didn't bring up about all the things that he's contributed to the indie author community. They didn't bring up the fact that he's helped out scores of authors, and they didn't bring up the fact that, you know, he was buying these books for his readers, or they didn't even ask the readers how they felt about this. So all hell breaks loose. Twitter just unleashes its wrath on him. And uh, so at one point, and I even saw this because we mutually follow each other on Twitter, uh, Dawson actually ended up saying that if I was intent on gaming the system, I would have bought 10,000 copies, sat on them forever and been number one. I wouldn't have discussed it on a popular podcast either. It's true. He gets thousands of downloads, I'm sure, per day. So what benefit did he have in sharing something that would be, you know, malicious or intent to, you know, game the system? And I actually went and checked more recently and uh, Mark's no longer on Twitter. At PB Writer does not exist. It, it actually kind of disappointed me because I followed him for some time now over there. So the argument is going to be this. Uh, buying your way onto a bestseller list is unethical. A lot of people are saying, is it unethical? Is it not unethical? Some people are saying, no, it's not. Some people say, yeah, it's totally fine, especially within context of what Mark was doing. But here's where it really got to kind of think about this. We got to look at both sides of the story because the average UK author earnings is reported to be about 10,500 pounds per year. With that being said, Mark was able to spend about a third of that up front to send out books to his readers in order to get himself onto a list. So sadly, a vast majority of the authors out there can't afford to go out and buy 400 copies in a local bookstore. But let's just say this, if the books are spoken for, let's say your readers are interested in buying a copy, is it okay to buy it in store? Or should you just be ordering wholesale copies and fulfilling it that way? That way there's no bolstering of the rank in the Sunday Times or New York Times. If not, then why have the bestsellers lists allowed this type of a practice to continue? This is year over year over year. There's been many occasions. And how can they mitigate these instances so the bestseller lists more accurately reflect the buying audience? Hey, I told you that I'm a huge fan of Mark Dawson. And again, I, I'm really sorry to see him going through some of this stuff. But again, we need to have some kind of civil conversation conversation, some type of a dialogue to where, you know, is something like this ethical or not? But I do want to send you on over to their channel because I really do like and support the self-publishing show podcast. You can actually take a look at it right on over here and subscribe to it right up over here, actually. Um, it's, it's a great podcast. You'll find out really quickly. In fact, actually in that episode is 234 where he talks about when he first bought those copies. I'll see you there.